and Charlie Squad. Tank support is in route. Roger, no resistance yet. Hey guys, and welcome to another Let's Play. This is Frontline's Fuel of War. Now, this is an interesting one. This one came back out in 2007, I do believe. It's best described as not Battlefield, or the Battlefield we've got at home. <laughs> it's a bizarre little game. Um, one that I really enjoyed because it was quite different at the time and I recently paid like I think it's $1.99 on the or $2.99 or something on the Xbox store and I gave it a go and I got straight hooked back into it so really cool it's your generic oh no China and Russia taking on the world kind of story and uh, America and I suppose the rest of Europe uh, is the other side. You know, it's the same story we've heard 688,000 times before. Um, basically, the only military story there ever is in video games. Um, but it's it's okay. The story isn't exactly the strong point, but it has some interesting mechanics. Now, <clears throat> I played this through this on this version a couple of times. Um, and... I was going to play the Steam version of this game, but apparently it's been delisted because when I searched for it, I couldn't find it. When I typed it in, it actually came up for $9.99, and then when I tried to buy it, it was just nowhere to be seen. So we're going to go with the Xbox 360 version running on the Series X. Anyway, let's get into it. So it's basically Battlefield. Um, apparently it was, this game was really good online, but I've never really been a multiplayer person. Couldn't really give two shits, to be honest, about multiplayer. Um, so I never actually played it, but the single player was, was pretty good. Um, so we're going to go for hardcore because this game... It's not really that difficult thanks to the regenerating health and stuff like that. So, you know, and you have lives in this game as well, which is interesting. Um, you have X amount of lives per level, and I think you get some more lives as you capture territories. So the name of this game is all about the digital battlefield, essentially. Uh, do you remember that uh, advanced warfare stuff that was literally everywhere in the mid-2000s? You know, how uh, American soldiers were going to have full-on heads-up display and, you know, their own personal satellite dish and all this other shit. They're going to have an army of drones in their back pocket. Remember that? The advanced warfare program that never actually went anywhere? Yeah, this game's all about that. Tom Clancy did that as well, uh, which is a really cool concept. Now, let's get into it. Something's happening. We've known it for a long time. The West knew it. East knew it. Once fully completed, it will provide for a significant increase in the volume of foil supplies from Russia to China. We've known it for a century. There is no doubt about our absolute and complete dependence on oil. Without oil, civilization. 
civilization as we know it could not exist. Oil was running out. It's what we grew up in. Post Middle East, post peak oil, post everything. What they called the long emergency. It started slow. Little things at first. Lines at the pump. That hot summer of 2008, when the blackout started lasting weeks. The avian influenza hit in 09. I got taken out of school when there wasn't enough vaccine. They said it would get better. Something would save us. Biofuels, solar power, cleaner nuke plants, maybe. The depression hit in 2012. Africa ran out of food, then we did too. People stopped trying to do anything about the problems and just tried to survive. We'd watched them starve for 40 years and it didn't seem real. But pretty soon the scenes we used to watch on the news were happening just down the street. It's been happening for years. Now we're at the tipping point. I was 16 when the Chinese and the Russians figured out they'd rather fight us than each other. We didn't waste time forming the coalition. Now, we're staring each other down across the last wells in the Caspian. I left school for the affiliated press and they sent me overseas. Out here in Turkmenistan, you can see it clearer. In the little prefab towns the oil boom left in Central Asia. This is where it's going to happen in towns too small to have a name, built in two weeks by oil industry contractors. It's 2024, the 21st century. People ask me how we let this happen. I tell them, we always knew. The storm is coming. 2024, eh? That's what a year and change away. <laughs> it's kind of an interesting story. I mean, obviously, when this came out, uh, that was nearly 20 years away. But um, hmm, kind of interesting. Uh, I do like that setup. It's it's kind of interesting. They could have done a little bit more with it, put a little bit more money into it, but. Um, yeah, no, I suppose that was the style of the time. This definitely kind of feels a bit budgety, but uh, anyway, let's get into it. So, oil. Everything else has failed. Well, interesting he mentions cleaner nuke plants. Uh, nuke plants are actually very clean. Very, very clean. And pretty safe. Until they're not. Which is the problem. Um, yeah, nuclear power, uh, solar power, biofuels. Now, not one of these things is going to save us in, in reality as well. But the combination of all of them is what we should be striving for. Anyway. So each mission has um, a set amount of goals to uh, push the line forwards. But that will make more sense as we get into it. Oh, I don't think we're going to be getting too bored. Anyway, so situational brief. Touchdown at the coalition coalition controlled oil refinery to relieve Alpha Company. Sandstorms are interfering with radio communication and satellite coverage. Relieve Alpha Company. Guard duty rotation. Meh. What could possibly go wrong, eh?
update, Skipper, but I'm still waiting for my in-flight meal. <laughs> oh, <dumbass. laughs> so, you guys just rotating in? Ah, you must be the local paparazzi. Wise up, Rayleigh. Yeah, we're coming off disaster relief in Anchorage. We're being brought in to control the coalition in oil fields. Staff Sergeant Whitburn, Delta Chalk Leader. Andrews, uh, Affiliated Press. I'm doing a piece on all the military deployments in the Caspian. Gonna make you guys heroes. Too late for that, Pops. I was born a hero. Huh? A hero assigned to guard duty. Interesting. Coming up on the pipe. Welcome to summer camp, boy. You kidding me? They said there was a town. It's more like a mining camp. It's a job. A uh, pretty valuable dump then. Most of the world's remaining oil is about 100 miles from here. Is that so, Princeton? Well, then why don't we... Oh! 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 Shit! What the hell was that? Mayday! Mayday! Select the one. Thank you, sir. Well, here we go. Okay, defend crash site. Seems like a reasonable thing to do straight off the bat. Now, we're... Oh, God. <laughs> straight off the bat, I'm too used to playing Gears of War. Time to hold the line. Now, the shooting mechanics in this game aren't actually too bad. They're perfectly serviceable. We have regenerating health, which is rather wonderful. But on this difficulty, you cannot take more than a couple of shots before it's game over. But that's okay, because we have multiple lives. And we can hold an absolute ass ton of ammo, which is quite nice. Now, if I can remember what the reload button was. Right, okay, the opposite left bumper. Got ya. So just... Okay, so the basic premise is we have this map and we need to push the front lines forward and you get a selection of objectives most of the time and it's basically up to you as to how you want to proceed which is quite cool. Uh, you get a few tools to your um, at your disposal but unfortunately weapon variety is pretty limited. We have this uh, assault rifle here which is okay, it's got a basic zoom. Uh, and there's a there's literally a, about three or four other main weapons apart from that. Uh, but there's lots of other little tools which we'll get to play with as the game goes on. Taking cover is very important, which maybe he should have done. Now you can see that our team that we're supposed to be attached to are just basically a bunch of generic soldiers which you probably will never know their names because they don't matter. Now enemies don't infinitely spawn as far as I can tell which is also pretty nice so you can just whittle them away. At least I don't think they respawn. Hello. And you've always got your own men with you as well. They kind of follow you around and as they get killed they do uh, respawn which is nice. Which kind of takes the sting out of the ragtag bunch of uh, guys that we start the game with. Because, you know, you never actually see them in combat. You are always just seem to be playing as generic soldiers, at least I think so. I can't say I've ever really stopped and studied these guys. Where's the dude with the weird soul patch? Is that him? Can't tell. 
can't tell. But uh, you can die, and you get replaced with another generic soldier, which is cool. Now, the guns sound fantastic. It's just a shame what happened to this developer going off to make Homefront, which was a poor choice, really. Which I'm sure was absolutely nothing to do with them. That's cool. Just going to creep and slowly make our way up. Now, this game isn't very long either, which is why I've decided to do it now, because... Well, October is in our sight lines. Sneaky, sneaky. Now, we've got that really cool little map above us. There's also... Ooh, we have some soft armor ahead of us. All right. We're going to need to find something to deal with that. We do have a grenade launcher, which will actually whittle away at this guy. Now, vehicles are a big part of this game. They're not bad. They kind of control a little bit like us, but they're not bad. We're just going to volley grenades out of this guy. Right, he's done. Really would prefer to be playing this with a mouse and keyboard, but hey. Controller will have to do. Ah, my phone's going again. My phone has literally rang every single time I've tried to do a recording in the last three days. I think we're... Oh, no. There's one little dude down there. Alright, cool, cool. Alright, come on, blue team. Let's move up. This is literally red versus blue. Except red is bad. Wait, I can't remember red versus blue now. Was red always bad? I don't think they ever was a bad team, was there? Alright, well... Back to these grunts. Ah, you can see our, our heroes running and cowering. Now, your men really aren't that good. It does take an awful lot of uh, convincing them to actually do any meaningful damage. You can carry a hell of a lot of ammo as well. But your ammo doesn't last. Every time you stand next to an ammo box like this, you do get your ammo back. So, there is that. It's got kind of like an arcade feel to it. But it's definitely a, a unique game. Anyway, let's go grab these objectives. Unfortunately, most of the objectives are basically the same thing. Like, run up to a computer and hold X. Or hold the area. Or blow something up. Yeah, and now as we go through the levels, you can usually pick up certain tools. Like this rocket launcher, for instance. We pick it up, we've now got it for the rest of the level. Which is pretty nice. Even if we get killed, we still have it. Now that cutscene we saw, that CGI animation, that's loosely based on the first level. This one. Which gives us a little taste of what's to come. Damn, look at these guys. Oof. If only we had a sniper rifle, huh? Well, we'll get a sniper rifle, but not for a while. Sadly, we can't put this thing in single shot. But we might be able to take his uh, helmet off. Well, we're pushing back. Right, come on, dudes. Let's get out of here. Oh, hi. Hello. Nice to see you. Luckily, we have one of these. Unfortunately, it does take a good amount of time to reload. But that's fine. As with everything else, we can just get our ammo back by going up to one of those ammo boxes. Which, are, to be fair, those ammo boxes are literally everywhere. So, it might sound like a lot having 11 magazines, but you can blow through them pretty quickly. I don't think the area is clear. Just saying. You also can't run. Come on, you little bastard. Let's see that head. There we go. Good night, sir. I'm ready for more. You're ready for more? We'll go get more, then. Be nice if you help me push the front line up. Come on, generic soldier number one. Let's keep going. Alright. Now, getting the high ground isn't always a brilliant idea. Ooh, he's got a rocket launcher. Oh, did I mention destructible environments? 
yeah, certain things can be destroyed. It's a little bit difficult to tell what can be destroyed and what can't be. But it is a surprising amount of stuff. And then it's also quite surprising how certain things just cannot be destroyed. Rocket launchers are freaking deadly in this game. And they will ruin your day. Yeah, no shit. See what I mean? We're down to two magazines already. Ooh, hello. Yeah, when your screen starts going a little bit red, it's time to take some cover. Kind of, uh, it's not as egregious as like Call of Duty, you know, when your screen starts getting smeared with jam, which I really hate. I hate that, you know, it starts smearing awfully textured jam all over the screen. Terrible idea. It looks like shit, and I'm being shot in the back. Ooh, hi, friend. Take that, Ivan. All right, lovely, lovely ammo. 50 round magazine in this bad boy as well. 50 rounds. Now, one thing I can tell you, although this game doesn't get um, any resolution boosts or anything from the Series X, unfortunately, the frame rate is so much better on the Series X. It's actually really smooth. There's no slowdown or anything, which is nice. Where it used to get a little bit choppy on the 360. Also, peep this smooth animation for the depth charges. Or demo charges, not really depth charges. Really freaking smooth animation. Alright, let's pop this bass. Oh yeah. Excellent work, stray dogs. <sighs> Yes, boss. Doing it, boss. Yeah, so we're actually called uh, Stray Dogs, which is kind of cringe, but whatever. Right, so this is one of the many drones that we get in this game. This is the suicide drone. And it has its use. You can pick up as many as there are available. Hunter drone. I don't know actually how many hunter drones there are here. I think there's unlimited. Usually there is not unlimited. So this is one of, I think, three drones that we actually get. But this thing's freaking sick, man. Just fly it straight in. Ooh. Oh no, we, I think we get four types of drones. We're going to see another drone in a minute, which is my favourite. The assault drone. Which we actually saw in the cutscene, uh, in the intro. Alright. Well, let's use these drones. Smoke them if you got them. Hey, buddy. No running. No running, dude. <laughs> Run, Ivan. There we go. Ah, oh, that's so satisfying. Anyway. What else can we nuke? It looks like... Oh, God. Yeah, you can also um, push the wrong button. And lose the ability to use your drone. Which does... There is actually a purpose for that. Alright, we've got some gun turrets up above us. Which we probably don't want. Oh, I was going to nuke my own guy then. Oh, hiding behind cover. Yep, I'm going to keep doing that, aren't I? No hiding behind cover. Let's take those MGs out. Because they're pretty rough. There's the assault drone there. Now this is all destructible here, I think, which is pretty cool. You remember when the 360 first came out and that was one of the big things they said? Now they have the power of the Xbox 360 and the unimaginable insanity power of the PS3. We're going to get these big um, physics-based games with huge destructible environments. Yeah, how did that work out? Where did that go? What happened to that? Because we're now on the Series X and the PlayStation 5, and we still don't have that. Right, so let's go grab up an assault drone. Now, drones have a limited range, as you'll see, by that signal strength. But these things are fun. They say these things are fun whilst my own man kicks me out of the way. We can blow apart their cover. 
So what's the weakness of this drone? Well, it does have limited ammo, like all drones, sadly. And it does have to reload. And reloading takes quite a while. But that's okay. It also has limited range indicated by the uh, signal strength down there. But you can just tap the left trigger and run back up to it to get some more signal strength, which is cool. Anyway, we can give our drone a rest now. Let's go take this place out. Knock, knock, boys. Anyone? Ah, I guess nobody's home. Curious. Yep. Oh, hello. He's obviously back here making a pot of uh, stroganoff or whatever it is. These red star guys eat. Right, so there's one tower. Straight on! Oh, hello. Good thing that happened whilst I was near one of these mounted guns. Now this mounted gun, as you can see, has unlimited ammo. They do not all have unlimited ammo. And there's quite a variety of gun turrets as well. You have the rail guns. Ooh. You have like Gatling gun turrets. This guy's got a rocket launcher. He sucks. Your mum doesn't love you, dude. Compensate him with a weapon like that. Oh, hello. Finally, something, something, death. Yeah, whatever, dude. Not bad. Now, I'm probably going to do this one level per video. Some of the levels on this difficulty actually get quite long. So, I don't know. But there's not many levels. Right. Is the reporter Andrew still with you? Negative, man. We don't know what happened to him. It's looking like the Red Star may have grabbed him. I'll give you an update when we know more. Great. We have to babysit, too? Yeah, we've got to go find our friend who's been stolen. Get. This is what it's all about. You this... Now this Jeep's actually pretty cool, because we have we've got a nice little machine gun here which does actually run out of ammo, has a huge amount of ammo though, and it's also got a uh, like TOW missile launcher attached to the back of it which is quite nice. Now if we start burning we can get the hell out of Dodge, and we can even get ourselves another vehicle, although there isn't a huge amount of vehicles. but. If we just chill back here, our health will regenerate, which is interesting, I guess. As you can see, receiving repairs. We also have a flare dispenser, which does, from what I can tell from playing this game quite a few times, uh, nothing. It's got a huge cooldown. Right, we've got some actual... Ooh, some more armor over there. Luckily, the TOWs... We'll sort his ass out. Now, it's not always advantageous to get in a vehicle either. Oh, dude. Missed him and hit him. Very nice. Let's waste as many of their vehicles as possible. Right, that'll do. Yep. In place gun there. Get rid of you. Ooh. How are we doing? Now the vehicles don't actually control that badly. Let's try and get a bit of our health back. You can't capture points in vehicles either, which sucks. But some of the vehicles are a little bit OP, so you can understand. Oh, hi. He's got a rocket launcher. Now, in most vehicles, if you push B, you can kind of go into a more, well, better kind of like gun sight view, but not in the Jeep. Right, we're good. We're good. Let's go grab this point. Securing the West Refinery. What have we got here? Ooh, we have an artillery strike. 
nice. I'll have that. We'll grab some ammo whilst we're here, but we're already topped up. Oh, good. That is not what we want. Nope, neither is that. Oh, we've lost our rocket launcher. Well, that's great. Call in an airstrike instead. Let's get the fuck out of here. Now, if that airstrike could come in soon, thank you. Yeah, that was a little bit unfortunate. Right, luckily you can control the gun, even though you're also driving. In other vehicles, if there's external guns and things on them, you will need to find some troops to man them. But hey, I'm not complaining. Let's go... Ooh! No, soft target, it's fine. Yeah, I can see the Red Star vehicle. It's not exactly rolling anywhere though, is it? Reload times are a little bit brutal on some of these vehicles. We could take the middle point out now. Oh, hey. Have to sneak in behind us, wouldn't you? Trashed his ass. So we have like 30 packs of ammo in this gun. Ooh. Which is kind of interesting. It's so much ammo that they may as well have just given us an unlimited amount. Kind of seems redundant otherwise. But all of the vehicles, from what I know, have uh, limited ammo, but it's basically unlimited. You, you really have to try to use it all. Whoa. Oh, God. I'm getting shot from everywhere here. Right. Let's go get some health back. Things are getting a little bit choppy. Ah, let's have a quick cigar and a cup of tea under here. Yeah, I genuinely don't know what the flare dispenser does. I'm guessing it's more of a multiplayer thing. If enemies are trying to lock onto you with like ro uh, rocket launchers and stuff, you could probably just pop some flares, and that will, oh, help you out. But that doesn't seem to have any effect on the AI, which I think is probably down to the fact that they never really use the homing ability. Ah, oh, God, we're trashed already. See what I mean about rocket launchers? They will really make your day worse. Hostile armor. Let's cut down as many of these guys as possible. Oh, hi. Hello. Red Star Vehicle, huh? See that guy up there with the rocket launcher? What a kit! He's dead now. Ooh. Ooh, that hurt. Ooh. Oof. Right, let's go dump you there. Let's go grab the objective. Ah, I see. It's enemy armor. Gotcha. Hopefully we can find a rocket launcher up here or something. Oh, ha, hi, hello. Welcome to your new home. He is out of our range though, I think. Yeah. Too far out of our range. I do like the way the missiles kind of spiral to their target. It is cool. They're not laser accurate. There we go. Is that actually going to get to the target? I think I think we wasted him. Sweet. Right, let's go. One more point left. Enemy armor spotted. Seriously? Enemy armor. Oh, where do you come from? Oh, no matter. Oh god. Oof. That was questionable. And here's some snivelling little turd hiding around here, I think. Where are you hiding, Ivan? Oh, jeez. That was not great. 
Oh, Jesus. Almost went tits up. Right, let's get back into this. Hopefully get some repairs done. Right, cool. On to the next one. Come on, boys. Oh, Jesus. Light arm fire. Oh, God damn it. Nothing worse than... Oh, having to reload in this game. Whoa, yes, that can go <laughs> that can go badly wrong. Yeah, so we can change our equipment and go for anti-vehicle or assault. But you can only do that when you die, which is problematic. So what happens when you die then? Well, uh, not much, as you can see. What happens when you run out of lives? Um, not much actually you just have to restart uh, from the beginning of the objective which isn't really a big thing now this could get a little bit sketchy Whoop. maybe I will have to cut these videos in half I don't know depending on how long they are Whoa. oh yep Let's reload. Kind of need some support, but we ain't got none, son. It's one man army. Woof. Woof. Someone's getting pet cheap. Well, stick that in your pipe. Okay, let's move up. As long as we don't get more vehicles, we should be okay. Go take this area. Now, when you take an objective, if there's enemy troops around here, they will run to the next one. Excellent. As you can see, he's now just going to run to the next uh, enemy line, which is kind of a cool feature. Excellent. So, one last task to be done. Rescue the reporter. Well, that's bad. Oof. Yeah, there's actually an enemy tank up there firing like Sabo rounds at us. Which is bad, by the way. It's very bad. And you can actually see the detail on the Sabo rounds, which is cool. You actually see the, um, the canister of the round split apart when the tank fires it, which is amazing bit of detail. And this is a really uh, unflattering position to be in. Oof. Lucky for me, I had one of these. Hey dude. Better late than never, I guess. Oh, let's just keep going. Chasing their lines. Smoke them if you got them. Sick. And we've got this like emotional, like sad music. They're really tugging at our heartstrings because of the war that is now uh, encompassing the world with Dude Bro 1 and 2 behind us. Oh, hi. Needs to be on your toes. Now, if you run out of ammo, you do have a pistol. The pistol is not actually bad. No way. There's got to be more here somewhere. Really? Alright, buddy. Let's bust you out. Just uh, look away or something. Don't look at the flash. Someone's making some noise out here. And that's the first mission.
got a feed from Caspian Central Relay. Red Star's pouring over the Turkmenistan border. What? This is supposed to be a treaty. Think about it. Blackouts, starvation, disease, economies are nearly collapsed. The Caspian and all its oil, it, it's been a powder keg just waiting to blow. <laughs> World War Three, Princeton. Is it World War Three? Spoiler, yes, basically. That's how it started. Was it World War Three? We didn't know. But one thing we all knew, Red Star forces had hit hard. Nearly all of the coalition forces stationed in Turkmenistan were gone. At this point, the coalition began their first offensives of the war. The troops were ready, yet Red Star forces seemed to be everywhere. The fighting to claim energy assets all around the Caspian was brutal. But the biggest news was that the Chinese had invaded Taiwan. <laughs> Things were really getting out of hand. As for the stray dogs, well, they were moving north now. They were about to unleash some inspired vengeance of their own. Sergeant Thompson always made sure of that. Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. Generic soldier guy number four. So, anyway, uh, that is... Frontline's fuel of war. So, I know it's easy to think whilst watching some of those cutscenes that you're watching Resident Evil 6, but this is a war game. So, thank you very much for watching, guys, and as always, till next time.